It's not going to sit there. Set it on the ground. Good morning. <clears throat> Let me get this up here. Pardon the uh, raspy voice here, but uh, uh, exciting to be here. Uh, start of another basketball season. Uh, there's um, been a lot go on in terms of um, uh, eight new players, six freshmen. We've got a um, an exciting group of guys that uh, uh, that I've really enjoyed coaching to this point. I think that the uh, uh, the leadership of four returning guys has been um, exceptional. I, I should add two others. Two other. We've got six guys back. Uh, I'd be very remiss if I did not mention Drew Casey and, and uh, Tyler Underwood, both walk-ons who were a part of the program last year. Um, but their familiarity, their leadership um, has been instrumental uh, in, in helping these new guys. I've been very, very pleased with them. Uh, I do want to single out Aaron Jordan. Uh, Aaron's our, our returning senior, uh, has just taken on a tremendous leadership role. Uh, within uh, uh, within our locker room, and uh, uh, he's got a pay it forward mentality. Uh, there's a young man that is all Illini. Uh, he's all Illini basketball. He's committed to uh, helping these young guys, and um, he is everything that I want our program to stand for. And and in terms of the work ethic, the character, uh, he's been tremendous. And and then we've seen tremendous growth. In, uh, in our sophomores, uh, in DeMonte, in, uh, in Trent, in those areas. Uh, not to exclude Kipper. Kipper has uh, uh, changed uh, not just physically. Uh, he's lost 12 pounds. He's more mobile. He's, uh, uh, he's worked extremely hard. And Kipper's a guy that uh, is, a, uh, is a lead by example guy. Uh, he's in the gym all the time. So I feel great about um, the veterans and the leadership that our young people uh, are getting. Um, there's a youthful exuberance. I've used that word a great deal about uh, about our young guys and about our new guys. And uh, uh, that's fun to be around every single day. <clears throat> I think the, uh, um, as you'll get to know these guys, this is a group with tremendous personality. Uh, you'll see that. We're not, uh, we're not a group that is just blah. We're a group that has as you get to know Io and you get to know Georgie and you get to know uh, Samba, you'll see guys that have, have, have a way about them that is, is very contagious and very magnetic. And uh, uh, again, that's, that's enjoyable. I've mentioned many times since, since this class has been signed, um, and I'd be very remiss. I've got a great staff who did an unbelievable job of putting the pieces together in this recruiting class. and, and uh, we added length, we added athleticism, uh, we also recruited very hard winning and uh, that's very evident in, uh, in, in these guys' success in their past uh, and it all, it all plays into a culture that we're trying to uh, uh, continually build here. So um, that's been fun. That'll be very evident. Uh, the one thing that I've been very pleased with, we've had six practices to this point, uh, today will be practice number seven, uh, is the competitive drive and the competitive nature of this group. Uh, we have uh, uh, very, very few down moments in practice in terms of non-competitive stuff. Uh, again, I, I, I tribute uh, uh, our young guys and their competitive spirit. Uh, our, our, we're making plays that aren't necessarily right yet but we're making plays because they're competitive and they want to win. So that's been something that's, uh, uh, that's been exciting to, uh, to watch and to see. Uh, we are young. There's no denying that. We're a young basketball team. And, and every single day, we have an oh wow moment that you go, wow, did we really make that play? That's both good and bad. And uh, uh, the thing that I think uh, uh, excites me the most is as we move forward, and I think we're about five weeks from our first game, you're going to see a group of guys that'll be a better basketball team in November 
than they were or in December that was better than, than the one in November and vice versa all the way down the road. Uh, this group will continue to improve. They're a very close group. I love our chemistry. We're working extremely hard on the defensive end. We have to get better on that end of the court. Uh, we've done that, I think, in terms of adding some athleticism and length. Um, but I think we've, we've got an IQ piece that I feel very, very good about as well. Uh, so those were a couple of things that, that we've talked about addressing. Um, our schedule, you've all seen it. It's one of the best in the history of this program. And I'm excited as heck about that schedule. I'm excited about the fact that we, we've got great home games in the State Farm Center, which I think is the best home court venue. We play in front of the best fans, the best student section every single night. And there's 15,000 in there. Um, to have Georgetown come in here, to have UNLV come in here. Uh, obviously, the expanded 20-game conference schedule uh, means another home game. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about uh, that. We'll definitely be, along with the group that's in Maui, I can't see anybody else having a tougher schedule than those teams in that event. Uh, Maui's an elite event. Obviously, Gonzaga, off the start, is going to be a top five team, a veteran team. Um, and, uh, and then you move forward from there. Uh, there's no easy ones. And uh, uh, so I'm, I'm excited. And, and you've obviously got the game in St. Louis, uh, playing Ohio State in Chicago, which is uh, United Center is a special place. It'll be great to get on that court uh, as we host the Big Ten tournament there and uh, get, getting it back to uh, uh, the United Center will be fun. And uh, we didn't play very well there, there last year, so I'm excited about uh, getting back in there and putting our best foot forward a little bit. But uh, a great schedule, um, and, it, and it's truly right around the corner. So our guys will get tested. I've said it with this in regards to the schedule. To be the best, you've got to play the best. And then you've got to not just play them, you've got to beat them. And we will gain a tremendous amount of confidence playing against these caliber teams. And uh, uh, that's what I want our program to be about. One that doesn't shy away from anybody. One that doesn't, doesn't uh, uh, when we go recruiting, we recruit under the premise that you're going to play a top flight schedule every year. Every single night you're going to play against the best players in the country. And uh, we do that in the Big Ten. Um, and we're also doing that in the non-league schedule, uh, which will help us uh, on down the road as we, as we prepare for Big Ten play. So uh, got an interesting sidebar this year in terms of a game in Madison Square Garden uh, against Maryland. Uh, it's Maryland's home game. Uh, so we'll, we'll be back in the garden. It's always a great game to... Uh, uh, play anytime you get to play in New York City in the Garden. Uh, it's part of the basketball hockey doubleheader, so a um, little unique, but it's it's something that uh, our guys are excited about again. So uh, great schedule and uh, a great group. I'm excited for you to get to know them. I'm excited for our fans to get to know them and see their personality and see how we uh, uh, and see how we we develop and continue to grow as this process. Uh, uh, moves forward, especially here in the next five weeks. Brad, what goals do you set for the team uh, that, are, that are season specific in the fall? And do you also set individual goals with each player? We set a group of team goals. Um, it's early for us to do that. So we have not specifically done that. Now, individually, those are very private. I ask our players every year for their five, five goals, not just basketball-related goals, personal, life, uh, whatever they may be. Uh, I think the one thing that um, I've always done is I felt like it's my job to help them achieve their goals. And sometimes, and I'll give you an example, be a 3-0 student. Well, if somebody's getting a D in a class, I can pull that young man in and say, hey, remember now, let's not lose sight of your goal here to be a 3-0 student. Maybe be the leading rebounder in the conference. 
you're averaging five rebounds a game, you know, and, and you're not going every time. We can remind them of that. That becomes their words, not mine. So we do that individually. Team-wise, uh, <clears throat> I'm simple. I don't put, I don't go through the schedule, put wins and losses by each one, what I think. I don't do that. Um, our team will set goals as, as, as all teams do. So, um, for me, it's very simple. Get better every day. Be an everyday guy. Get better every single day. And if we can do that, then the process will play itself out. Uh, there'll be nights where we score um, more than the other team. There'll be nights when, when, when maybe the other team uh, scores more than we do. Uh, but it's about the process, and it's about just getting better every single day so we can maximize who we are. You know, I, I think there's, I think there's, um, I think there were a lot of positives last year. I, I, I think that that uh, uh, you start looking at Leron Black, and and Leron was a guy that uh, was a 28 percent three point shooter, became a 52 percent three point shooter, a guy that uh, uh, had an All Big Ten year. Um, I think we saw the emergence of Aaron Jordan. Um, I, I think collectively as, as a group, I think we're deeper. I think we have, uh, um, I, I feel very comfortable with our perimeter play. I think we'll be a better shooting team um, at, at every spot uh, than, than we were last year. Now, we've got to go out and prove that when the bright lights are on. Uh, but uh, uh, the emergence of Trent Frazier, um, I mean, goodness, what a freshman year. What a freshman year that young man had. and. If you all remember back now, he, he wasn't great at Eastern Illinois in that uh, hurricane relief game. So uh, to see his development, to see his growth, um, a healthy DeMonte Williams, um, you know, th there's a lot of positives that come from the returners. But there were a lot of positives last year. And to see uh, Leron Black graduate, sign a pro contract, uh, to do that, to see Aaron Jordan persevere like he did, uh, I take a lot of positives out of that. And those are things that we talk about with this group, and, and, and it's about growth. So uh, our young guys can learn a lot from that. Two of the first week of practice, how are the new bigs doing, and how important is it for one of them to, to be a, a defensive stopper for you or to play in that hell line defense? Yeah, I think it's, it, it's not just our bigs. Our bigs have done great. And, and we've had a couple of injuries, uh, obviously Adonis De La Rosa. Uh, he's coming off his knee injury, and he's he's getting closer. Uh, he, he's worked extremely hard. He's dropped uh, about 28 pounds uh, since he's been here. Um, he's a force. He's a load. He's a young man who's seven foot. We've got him down to 263, I think, um, right in there. Um, and he's a guy who's proven. And uh, it'll be a nice uh, addition for us. Uh, Anthony Higgs has been out with a foot injury, and. Um, uh, so we monitor that uh, every single day. But uh, uh, Georgie Bashanishvili has exceeded every expectation that I've had at a very early point. Uh, he's, um, and I try not to put too much pressure on young guys, but I do say this about him. Uh, he's the second smartest freshman I've ever coached in terms of basketball IQ uh, and understanding and feel. And uh, um, his, his, he, he's got a very much a, a, a mature mental approach to the game. He understands it. Um, from the defensive side of things, it's a collective group. Uh, we were, we're working on being one step better than we were last year. And I mean l literally one step. One step more to the helpline takes a charge. One step closer uh, blocks a shot. Um, I think all, we, we've emphasized that a great deal, and, and I think we can be. I think Samba Kane, Samba's a guy that uh, uh, has length, athleticism. You line him up baseline to baseline, he can be as fast as any guy we have on our team. Um, and we've got to find ways to, to continue to utilize that. So uh, as we move forward, uh, I'm excited about those guys and, 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 and their growth and what they can become. Georgie's a guy we can play a lot of offense through because he's an exceptional passer. Yeah, it's a real challenge. I mean, he's eight weeks behind. And uh, 
the biggest challenge for Samba has been uh, just in the in the fact that he misses time with Fletch, um, and and you're talking about a guy that uh, all of a sudden you're throwing him in two and a half hour practices, and and the conditioning piece is at, was not there. He's he's close, um, but he missed eight weeks of weights, and we did so many fundamental things uh, that pertain to our system. Uh, this summer, and he's he's getting caught up. But I will give Samba a lot of credit for this. He shows up every day. He, he, he puts in extra time. He's concerned about understanding what we do and film and 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 knowing that. So it's just a it's it's just getting him caught up. Uh, and he's slowly but surely getting there. With all the turnover that Aaron's seen throughout his career here, just what does it say about his character that he stuck this out? Oh my gosh, somebody needs to make sure they hire him. I, I think you're talking about a guy who's persevered through um, through a lot. Um, change for young people is not easy. It's very challenging. It's very, very difficult. And for a guy that um, it can both be both good and bad. Um, but I think it speaks of his upbringing. I think it speaks of his family values. I think it speaks of his, his dedication to this university. Um, if, if I could put Illinois basketball and put a picture, it's his as the guy who I want to represent our program and what I want our program to be about. You get 15 guys that care. I use the term pay it forward. He wants nothing for Illinois basketball but to be the greatest of all time in his lifetime. I mean, he is committed to it with recruiting, uh, to, to his commitment. So uh, to have a leader like him, and to have a voice like him, I I, I can't put uh, uh, I can't put a value on that because it's so so important and 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 again it does speak volumes to to who he is as as, as a person. Yeah, I, I, you know, uh, I love Kip. Man, I, I, I love Kip. And, and sometimes um, I saw it early with Kip. You know, Kipper's a talented guy. Kipper's got an unbelievable gift to put the ball in the basket. And, and we saw that at times. And, and for Kip, it was consistency. And it was being that guy who can be um, uh, responsible, accountable every single day, not just to himself, but, but to his teammates, more importantly and becoming a great teammate. Wonderful human being, tremendous personality. It's gonna, gonna, gonna hug you, dap you up, talk to you. That's very contagious. That's what we're trying to get out of him um, on the court as well. And uh, uh, we helped lean him up, Fletch did. So I think he'll be a, a more versatile player uh, on the defensive end especially. Um, getting him to um, um, become more vocal and more more of a leader uh, so that person personality comes out our new guys have helped him with that he doesn't feel restrained anymore and and I think those things are are, are positive but you know I think the great thing about Kipper is yeah I, I, I challenge Kipper and and he handled that in such a professional way um, and and he's he, he'll reap the, the the rewards for that and uh, um, he's a guy that's uh, uh, a big part of, of, of everything we're planning. What does Kip need to do to take that next step? Yeah, I think just continue to do what he's doing every single day. And I think as as his as as he does that, there's going to become a, a consistency consistency and confidence that he's going to gain. He knows he can score the basketball. He had I don't know 26, 28 against Michigan State. He had. 30 plus and in, and in, in against Iowa, he as his confidence grows, we're going to see his game jump to another level. That's what I keep telling him. There's a whole nother place for him to get to. Kipper loves to come to the gym. He loves to work. He spends as much time in there as anybody. That will all pay off for him, and and I think it's just a confidence thing as much as 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 anything. And as as long as he stays consistent in what he's doing every single day, we'll we'll all get to see that. Now that DeMonte uh, had a summer without injury, how does that figure that he you know, starts the year fully healthy? 
how is that going to transform him? Well, you need to ask Tevian Jones about the dunk and practice that DeMonte had on him over the top of his head. Um, and, and I'm just saying that in a really good way. Not about Tevian, because Te we all know Tevian's really athletic, but to see an explosiveness in DeMonte. But as he's physically, you know, DeMonte's the guy that likes to walk around with his shirt off. Okay, there's confidence in that. No one, he goes, Coach, I don't have a six pack, I've got an eight pack. You know, I mean, in his abs, and he's in shape, and, 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 he, and he's healthy. There's tremendous confidence that I love with that. And uh, he knows he's healthy. He's explosive again. Uh, he, he's, he's, he's put in a lot of time working, uh, advancing his game offensively this summer. So I think we'll see a next level. I talked about the it factor with him a lot. That hasn't been lost. That's been enhanced. So I think as we, as we, as we move forward, here's a guy who can be not just one of our better, better players. He can be an, uh, an all Big Ten player. He's an, he's an all Big Ten defender. I know that right now. Everything. You know, you're talking about a guy who is 6'4". Let's give him 6'4". Uh, he's got a 6'11 wingspan. Uh, he, d he gets more deflections than anybody on our team. Uh, but it's his IQ. It's the stuff that I don't have to coach that, that he does instinctively because he, he sees it half a step early. He's got that innate ability to read a play, to feel that the, 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 and anticipate what's coming. And when you can anticipate in basketball, that's a major league quality to have. He does that. Uh, I think we'll see an, en an enhanced offensive game. Okay, he's added some game, some more game off his bounce. He's added a floater. He's added. Uh, he's become more consistent with his jump shot. But defensively, I think he can be as good a defender as there is in the Big Ten Conference. And if you're that, uh, you're one of the better defenders in in uh, college basketball. As advertised, as advertised, and I, I you know, Io's. Uh, a lot of people talk about Io, and they should. And he had a, he had an unbelievable summer with USA Basketball. Um, Io's greatest attribute may not be anything he does physically. He is an unbelievable teammate. Unbelievable, and 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 his pride for winning is exceptional. Uh, he's, he's a guy that everybody, everybody knows how hard he works. He puts in a ton of time. And, it's, and, and, it, and basketball is really, really important, and being successful is really important. But he's got one of those, those personalities that he's magnetic. He draws guys to him, and he makes them better. Uh, USA basketball coaches said it, be said it best. I mean, he led him in assist. He's the guy that everybody loved to play with. And that's very evident on our team. He's very competitive now. He's going to challenge you. We've had some great battles every single day between Trent Frazier and Io DeSumo. That's fun to watch because they're making each other better. But Io's unselfish. Io, Io may have a night where, he's, where he scores 20. He may have a night where he has 12 assists. He may have a night where he gets seven rebounds. And along with that, he's got a chance to be one of the one of the better defenders I've ever coached. He's got length. He's got some of the intangibles that, that DeMonte has. And uh, he's still learning conceptually what some of the things that we do. But uh, instinctively, character, whew, as advertised, he's really, really good. You mentioned Trent Io. Adding Andres Felice into that mix, how do you kind of see mixing those as kind of three point guards together for you? Yeah, Andres is the old man. You know, and, and, I, and, I, and I say that. In, in, a, in a really good way. He's got an old man's game. And Andres is, is the most, is the least talked about guy out of every practice. We never talk about, we never talk about him because he does so many things right. He's been extremely well coached. Um, he's, he's, he's unique in that we play fast and we're trying to play fast. But the one thing that he does he never gets sped up in his mind. The game is slow for him. And uh, there's a maturity about that. Uh, 
yeah, you can very easily see all three of those guys on the court together. Uh, Andres is a very, very heady defender. He's got great hands. Uh, another guy who anticipates the game very well. And, and I get, again, a guy that <clears throat> just finds the ball. Every time I turn around, the ball's in his hands. He's got the rebound. He's got the loose ball. Uh, so many intangible things. And again, there's a, there's a reason that young man won a national championship and was a two-time state champion in junior college. He's, and he's, he's figured that, that piece out. So, yeah, there's, there's going to be lineups out there. You're going to look and you're, you're going to see all three of those guys out there, which uh, uh, good luck guarding any of those three in ball screens. Tevye and add to your wing that's a little different than what you have on the roster right now. 6'7". Scary, scary length. Uh, he's a guy. Tev's a guy that 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 can score it, in 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 all three facets of the game. Very good catch and shoot guy. Um, he's uh, he's an elite runner. And then there's a guy who can finish at the rim and way above the rim. Uh, he's a he's a special jump. Excuse me. He's a special jumper. He's a guy that can play. Uh, above the rim. He's a, he's a very, very good rebounder. Um, and then he's a guy who's got a one, two dribble pull up that um, is unique. There's not a lot of mid range game in today's game. He has that. So, but he, he's a guy that offensively um, can do a lot of things. I think he's still trying to figure out our system in terms of, you know, in the half court. In the open court, he's electric. Uh, but uh, yeah, and then there's a guy who's versatile on the on the perimeter. He can literally guard two, three, four uh, because of his athleticism and his length. Last two years we talked about striving to get to positionless basketball. Just where are you at with this team so far this season and achieving that? With certain lineups, we're there. You know, I think that that uh, uh, you can see us play four guards a big. You can see us play uh, as we did last year. I mean, you could see us. You could slide us. We can slide Kipper over. Play, get let Kip play some five, and mat, and and force that matchup. Um, I, so I, I think we're getting we're getting there. We we have different pieces. You know, one guy'd be very remiss to to talk about who's been exceptional is Alan Griffin. You know, you, now you've got a six five, elite shooter, who has a real capability to make hard shots, and. Um, and, and again, a kid that, as you see him over there, has tremendous length and has is, is got a chance to be a very good defender. So you're, you could see a lot of different lineups from us. I, right now, today, if you ask me who to start, I couldn't tell you. I know, but I do know we have some very good players who I can just put out there and, and we're going to cause some matchup problems uh, for our opponents. And, and uh, uh, for us, it's just becoming consistent and continuing to grow, and and uh, we're getting we're getting a lot closer to that positionless thing. And you know, Georgie's a guy that again gives us that versatility because he's a very good three-point shooter, and uh, we can do some of the same things with him that we did uh, we did we did with LeBron. Chris, you talked about fighting for your culture last year. Mm -hmm. Is this group bought in? Yes, and it's a great question to ask them. Absolutely. Thank you. We'll see you over.